The Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley, arrived in Venezuela on an official visit to strengthen cooperative relations between the both nations. In France, security forces announced on Saturday a ban on Protestant demonstration in major cities. In Kenya, at least 20 people were arrested on Friday during a demonstration against the government's new tax on oil products. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. The Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Moore Motley, arrived in Venezuela on Saturday with the aim of strengthening bilateral relations and cooperation. Barbados Minister was received by the Chancellor Ivan Hill after her arrival in the country. She expected to meet with President Nicolas Maduro, who has expressed his satisfaction at the visit of a representative of a brotherly and friendly country. Bilateral relations between Venezuela and Barbados are the 54-year-old and are based on the respect for self-determination and cooperation and have generated a sign of important agreements of common interests. In a historic day, 16 the repressors accused of crimes against humanity during the civil military dictatorship were sentenced on Friday in Argentina. Seven of them were sentenced to life in prison. On Friday night, the mega trial that started in mid 2018 in the Federal Court of San Juan ended. The Federal Criminal Oral Court read the verdict, and the total number of those implicated was 24. The others died. The verdict was read by Alberto Carelli. Paula Marisi and Gretel Diamante, who sentenced seven repressors to life imprisonment, acquainting eight and nine others were sentenced to between 4 and 12 years. In Argentina, 24-hour strike for distance and inner city buses began on Friday at midnight in the greater Buenos Aires and in other six provinces. The strike was called on by the automobile and tram union in response to bus companies failing to pay what they said were agreed upon salary rises. The six provinces affected are Corrientes, Entre Rios, Santa Fe, Formosa, Misiones, and Tucumán. Public transportation in greater Buenos Aires were was complicated even more due to a surprise for the 30 a.m. local time strike on the Sarmiento trial land, which connects the city with the southwestern Buenos Aires metropolitan area. At least six people were injured on Friday after an explosion at the gas production platform in the Gulf of Mexico. All of company Petróleos Mexicanos reported that the fire broke out at the Mohan Chana Tiny Net platform and later spread to the compression platform. 328 workers were working at the process center. 321 of them were evacuated with the support of the seven vessels. There was an explosion at a gas production platform in the early hours of the morning, which is being attended to. Some people are reported missing, yes, three or four. Pemex firefighters are there. The Navy is there. It's on the coast of Tabasco and Campeche. In El Salvador, the movement of victims of the emergency regime held a rally in Plaza Salvador del Mundo in the Salvadorian capital to demand the release of their relative. During the demonstration, the activists assured that in the last few days there had been at least six dead inside the penitentiary centers. The demonstrators demand the release of their relatives who, according to them, were arbitrarily detained. It's not true that there is peace in El Salvador. The Central American games have served Bukele to hide the truth, to hide the suffering of this family. Here they are all innocent families. We have proof, documents of young people that they defend, that they are innocent. They have proof of work references, of study, trophies. They have won awards. It is not fair that they are in prison. 
We take advantage of this day that there is also a national holiday and that the Central American games continue and that they are the last ones to tell the world that it is not true that there is peace in the country. There is repression, deaths in the prisons, arbitrary arrests, and a regime of exception that has been in this country for more than 15 months. We ask for our children back, mainly because I am a grandmother who lives alone. My son works for me. I already owe two months rent because I'm sick and I can't pay. They won't give me a job because of my illness. I hope they listen to me. I have my documents here, my documents that show that I'm going for surgery and I can no longer work because of the illness I have, Mr. President. I hope you listen to me. He's the only son who really works for me. Although he doesn't have a steady job, he's the only one who responds to my expenses. Some comrades say that the authorities had threatened to put them in jail and that their leaders were going to be free. I repeat, in Movir there are no leaders, there are no bosses, and there is no command structure. Here we activate ourselves in a WhatsApp group and they say, comrades, we do this and we take a tour and we do it. They threaten to put us in jail and the others will go free. I don't think that the 45,000 innocent people they might have are enough for them. I come back and say, I can applaud them for having captured many criminals. But it is time for the prosecutors and judges to do their job, the public defenders to do their job. In Guatemala, the volunteer fire department remain on alert due to the increased activity of the Fuego Volcano. The National Institute of Seismology, Volcanology, Meteorology and Hydrology of the country detailed that the volcano located in the central region of Guatemala entered its eruptive phase, uh, presenting expulsion of ocean lava reasons for which they declared the alert for the surrounding communities. According to the experts, the volcano is in a transitory period since its last eruption. Let's take our very first break now, but remember, you can now follow us on our TikTok account as well as in English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Stay tuned for more news. Welcome back to From the South. The French security forces announced this Saturday the banning of Protestant demonstrations against police violence and repression in major cities. According to the prefecture of the ICE village department, the ban on the march is due to possible disturbances of public order due to recent protests in several localities of the European country. The ban follows a judicial appeal which upheld the decision to sentence at the popular rally due to fears of renewed arrest following the death of a 17-year-old boy at hands of police despite the media. The party La France in some months called for rallies of mourning and angered for the police violence in the cities of Marcellus and Sabron, but not in Paris. Turkey President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said on Friday that his government still cannot approve for Sweden's succession to NATO due to its support for terrorists. Erdogan comments came hours before the, he was due to receive Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, who talks focus on the Ukrainian conflict and the U.S. led military block expansion. The Turkish president reiterated his support to NATO open door policy, but stressed that he could not support those who welcome terrorists and urge Sweden to fulfill its commitment. Very few partners have made the contributions that Turkey has made to the NATO alliance in the last 71 years. While these acts are self-evident, I have been monitoring with deep concerns the campaigns that have been waged against our country for a while now. I'm concerned for the future of the alliance when I see the steps that are being taken at the expense of violating the established traditions. How can Turkey address a country where terrorists are roaming its streets? How can a state that does not distance itself from terrorist organizations contribute to NATO? How can those who do not fight terrorism fight the alliance's enemies? 
The Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban, stated on Friday that the asylum system of the European Union does not work. During a migration summit held in Austria, Orban stressed that Budapest protects Europe from illegal migration. According to data, during the last year, 330,000 people were detained in a irregular situation at the European borders, 270,000 of them in the border areas between Hungary and Serbia. The White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan announced at a press conference on Friday that the U.S. will deliver the cluster bombs to Ukraine. While the United Nations promotes the prohibition of this type of ammunition because of the potential damage to the civilian population and rejects its use on the battlefield, the U.S. approved the delivery of the cluster bombs to Ukraine in the middle of the armed conflict with Russia. The Russian government said on Saturday that the delivery of the culture and munitions by the U.S. to Ukraine is one more sign of the desperation that affects Washington and its partners. The Russian ambassador to Washington, Anatoly Antonov, stated that this controversial split of the Biden government to Kiev is a decision that has been the, even been questioned by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, and that it will not affect the course of the objectives set by the Russian troops in the conflict. On Friday, the International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Grossi said in a statement that experts have checked a wider section of the perimeter of the Saporija nuclear power plant's compound pond, finding no indications of mines and explosives. According to Grossi, the experts were able to check a wider section of the perimeter of the Saporija power plant, large coaling pond. They also visited as leading the gate separating the coaling ponds from what remains of all Kakova survivors. Elisur English launches its own videos on the demand side. For you to go and revisit our interviews, top stories, special broadcasts and more, just go to the top left corner in our website homepage and click on the video option to access our VOD platform. Now, let's take our final break. Don't go away. Welcome back. At least 20 people were arrested on Friday in Kenya during a demonstration against the government's new tax and oil products. Hundreds of people attend the call for the demonstrations in Nairobi, in the coastal city of Mombasa, and in the port city of Kisumu. The demonstrators also demand stability for salarial workers and companies. Police forces dispersed the mobilization with tear gas bombs, saying it was to prevent the blocking of streets. How is this life? This life has become so hard. As it is, I'm tired. Please lower the prices of petrol. Today, I'm protesting because of petrol prices. I'm tired of this life. My wife has run away because of the price of floor and the hard life. I can even pay rent because of the cost of living. The landlord is always at my door and he needs money and there is no money. We want him to lower the cost of living so that every citizen can afford food to eat and educate their children. We do not have anything. We are working hard but there is no money. He wants to tax the little money we have in our pockets. What will we eat? He is increasing taxes on people who have nothing. If one has money, it is okay to be taxed. We have nothing. Our young men can even marry. They are unable to feed themselves. They are earning nothing. How will they feed those the World Health Organization is celebrated the distribution of the RTS.S malaria vaccine, describing it as a real breakthrough in child health and child survival. Additionally, the World Health Organization's Director General, uh, Dr. Tedros Adnahon Jesus, stated that uh, the climate change is allowing an increase in the number of mosquitoes carrying malaria like uh, diseases and ratified the safety of vaccines that have, been, uh, that have already been provided in Africa. African countries. Climate crisis, changing weather patterns, mosquitoes that carry this disease are increasing in density and spreading further afield. Malaria remains one of Africa's deadliest diseases, killing nearly half a million children under the age of five 
every year and accounting for approximately 96% of global malaria deaths in 2021. At the first vaccine against malaria, the RTSS vaccine has now been delivered to more than 1.6 million children in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi. It has been shown to be safe and effective, resulting in a substantial reduction in severe malaria and a fall in child deaths. On the other hand, the World Health Organization's uh, Director of Immunization Vaccines and Biological Products recalled that in spite of advances, a child dies of malaria remain. It's important to remember nearly every minute a child dies of malaria. And the introduction of malaria vaccine as another tool, an additional tool in the toolbox to fight against the severe disease, the deaths that occur, is a really essential um, step forward. Malaria vaccine is a real breakthrough in child health and child survival. It's the first vaccine for a parasite. And this is the thing that kills children in Africa and is the vaccine that is in, the, in such high demand with many countries applying for this vaccine. So this is a very um, positive news story that the allocations are being made and in Ethiopia, a young engineer and entrepreneur that has developed an uh, innovating construction method that resorted to a material that has become a nightmare in today's world. Still, as uh, many start up, uh, he's still struggling to get investors. Howard uh, Hansen is founder and CEO of uh, Cubid, an award-winning company that, with the help of uh, additives, turn plastic into black beans and interlocking blocks, uh, which today are being assembled in a pilot project. So it's, it's, like you said, it's uh, mainly plastic waste, recycled plastic waste that, you know, that forms into these construction materials. As far as assembly, uh, the idea is for it to be super simple. We, you would need an engineer, a contractor, and with, uh, you have a manual. And the whole point is to get it done with inexperienced workers, uh, obviously under supervision. So it's uh, ease of assembly is there. It's, it's very easy and simple. When it comes to raising money as a startup, it's an uphill battle in the beginning. And it's a very scary thing, especially when it's the first startup that, that you're forming. In my case, uh, I was very fortunate that I had a group of people, both from family, friends, business acquaintances from the past, that really knew me, really believed in what we were doing and were willing to give us that initial catalytic seed that we needed to get going. We have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorienglish.net. You can also see us on our socials, from Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. For Telesorienglish and from the South, I'm Ana Marrero. Thank you for watching.